Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <A> nice foot. <laughs> okay. Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting Cardinal on Birdhouse and I'm sipping on some strawberry tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks such as this one. So the painting that I did today is inspired by a photo that was submitted by one of my Patreon members by the name of Patricia Steele. I have a benefit for my Patreon members where every now and again I'll put a call out for some photographs. They send in the photographs. I'll se select a few to turn into YouTube tutorial videos and as a thank you I'll send this original painting out to Patricia so I hope she enjoys it. Um, and if you're interested in learning how you too could submit your photos for me to turn into tutorials and or you'd like to learn more about my Patreon membership program, I have all of that information down below in the video description. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you could certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, chrome yellow, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, Mars black, fire red, uh, green oxide, and cobalt blue. And of course you can switch up those colors. I'm going to be using for my tools today a white piece of chalk for some drawing and then four brushes from my personal brush line which is Michelle the Painter brushes. Get them in order here. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number eight round synthetic brush. I have a number two round synthetic brush and I have a number two bright synthetic brush and I'm just going to call them out as I use them. Of course you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me you're probably going to want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes and down below this video in the video description I will provide you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link to my shop where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of canvas to the paints and the brushes and all the good stuff in between. You can also purchase from my shop things individually like the brushes from my brush line. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting a base coat onto the canvas. I'm gonna use my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm gonna use my number two bright to pre-mix a custom color for the background or for the base coat. I'm gonna be using black, brown, and white in this step, and I have pre-mixed myself my custom color, which is gonna be a uh, medium to light warm gray. So it's right here on my palette, so you can see where I'm headed. How I got to this is mostly white, and then I put a brown and black in it, but I used more brown than black, so just a teeny tiny touch of black, plus maybe about twice that amount of brown and then a lot of white, and then I mixed it together. Because I want this to be, again, a um, medium to light uh, gray, with a little bit of warmth to it. So that's where the brown came into play. You could put as much brown in it as you want, but just something that still resembles gray, but not a cold gray, like something that looks like it might steer towards blue. This definitely steers towards brown or tan. So that's the color I'm going for. Once you get it, you can put the mixing tool away, take out your large bristle brush, and then just paint the entire canvas 
with that color. You can use any brush stroke that you want. You're just gonna go for a nice kind of solid uh, coat on the whole canvas. Because of the color choice that we're using for the background, this will cover really well. So you most likely will not have much streaking or even see your brush stroke. So you can have the liberty of going any which way that you want. When I'm doing a base coat on my canvases, I do tend to like it to be flat. And what I mean by that is I don't like to have um, bumps from my the thickness of my paint um, visible. So I will, once I, once I get the whole um, canvas covered, I tend to go back with my brush and just kind of make sure, like uh, use long, broad brush strokes in order to level out the paint. You could also, as you do this, you could paint the edges or the sides of your canvas. That'll make your project look nice and finished and complete. I tend to do that um, these days. I used to do it throughout the painting, but these days I've been tending to do it after my painting is completed. I'll go back and I'll kind of paint those edges with one of the colors that's in the painting, but you could certainly do it at any time, especially if you've, if you've got a nice solid base coat like this that you could simply just wrap around those edges. And then once I've got this on here, I'm just going, I've got a couple of little crummy things here. <laughs> gonna take care of those. I'm just gonna take my brush and just do long, broad strokes back and forth, left to right. This is where um, I've, I use this technique to get the paint to be nice and level. Even though acrylic will predominantly self-level on its own, doing this will help to work out any really thick spots that you might have had or to help catch any spots that you might have missed. And then we're gonna be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some atmospheric dimension in our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. I do recommend before you start this step that your canvas is dry. It'll be a little bit easier to do it that way. The colors I'm gonna be using are my gray, red, blue, yellow, and maybe a and definitely a touch of black too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a very soft, almost hard to detect type of atmospheric dimension just to one i'm using a photo as my uh inspiration here so i want it to resemble the photo but two i definitely don't want to just have a flat background so even if i even if my photo showed just a flat background i would most likely put some atmospheric dimension in it because that's the way i like to do things <laughs> so for this one there is a little bit there and that's what i'm gonna um include so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make it just a little bit darker up in this top left hand corner maybe a little bit on this side too with uh my gray plus a touch of black and maybe a touch of blue i don't know if i said it i was using blue but i'm using blue too um and then i'm going to make sure i have a second coat all over the canvas with predominantly that gray but i'm going to put in little spots of red hues and yellow hues just to make it look like there's something way off in the distance that is just out of focus. The photo is so hyper close up on this birdhouse and the bird that everything else that we see is out of focus. So that's what we're gonna accomplish. So I'm gonna pick up my gray plus a teeny tiny bit of black paint. And when I say teeny, I mean just a teeny tiny dot on the corner of my brush. And I'm just gonna start using this circular type of motion I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of blue also to go in this corner up in through here. So just itty bitty bit. I don't necessarily want it to do anything other than add a hint of another color. I just picked up more of my gray on my brush. So just a little tiny hint of the color. I'm using a circular brush stroke. You could really use X's, circles, long brush strokes, whatever works for you. I'm gonna put pick up a tiny bit of red plus my gray. So again, just a itty bitty bit. Maybe put this in through here, just a tiny, tiny bit. And again, I'm just letting these colors really just merge together, almost having it so you can't detect any 
um, sections of colors, just letting them just kind of all blend together. As I come over towards this right side, I'm just gonna, I just picked up some of my uh, gray without washing my brush. I might add a little bit something else up in this top right hand corner, but just kind of getting this all to just work well together. My gray turns a little bit darker when it dries. You can tell that by seeing it here versus here. This is dry, that's wet. So I know that that's gonna turn a little bit darker as it dries. So I think I'm gonna just add just a dot of black just to make it just a itty bitty bit darker, but not much, and just make sure that it blends in. And then as I come down, this whole area is gonna be the birdhouse. So, and the bird, so I don't really need to do anything other than make sure that I've got a good second coat on here, just to make sure that I didn't miss any spots, make sure that this blends in with whatever little hints of color that I did add into that background. I think I might add a tiny bit of red over here on this right hand side. So just little pop a little tiny bit of a color on your brush while that gray is still wet and just rub it on in and that'll give you just those little subtle nuances in an atmospheric kind of out of focus background. So you don't have to go full on with super different colors, just giving that teeny tiny bit of a uh, hue change or a uh, temperature change in that color will allow you to get these really cool effects. So I just kind of working my way down here. So this is just, I just keep picking up my gray at this point, just making sure that I've got a, a second coat on, being very carefree with my, with my brush stroke because it doesn't matter all too much. So down in through here, I'm detecting a little bit of orangey type of tone. So I'm gonna put my gray on here with, um, so it's kind of a little wet as I add additional colors. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of red. And again, I'm stressing teeny tiny bit. So just a teeny tiny bit. And then I'll pick up a teeny tiny bit of yellow, just a little tiny dot on my brush. Just kind of work those together. That's gonna to give me a little bit of that orange type of hue that I'm seeing in the photo. And of course you can amp up stuff like that too. If you want there to be more of a kind of a sunset type of look down at the bottom of your canvas, you could certainly amp that up. I think actually I want a little tiny bit more. So I'm going a little tiny bit of red. I mean, just an itty bitty bit of a dot. And again, just stressing the minimal amount of paint that I'm using on my brush, working it in. There we go, I've got some nice orange tones going on in through there. And then I think that's all I'm gonna do. Just bring, bring that gray, make sure I've got the whole canvas covered. And then I'm gonna be using my drawing utensils for the next step. I might add a little bit more red over on that right hand side. So you can again make yours, picking up a tiny bit of red, that tiny little dot, um, you can make yours into whatever kind of color background that you want. And then once you've got this done, we are going to be using this, our drawing utensil for the next step. So you can put this brush away, take out your drawing utensil and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna draw an outline for our objects. So this is gonna be the birdhouse and the bird. I'm gonna be using my chalk. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that is comfortable to you. Again, I recommend that your canvas is dry before you start this step. I'm gonna guide you through a series of markers. We'll connect those markers. We're gonna be making some very generic basic shapes. No fine-tuned detail in this drawing, just something that we can section out, we can almost like block in paint for the first layer of all these objects. So we're just drawing basic outlines for certain sections. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna guide you to the center of your canvas, top to bottom, left to right. For me, the center of my canvas is somewhere in this vicinity. And then what I'm gonna do from there is I'm gonna go up about two, two and a half inches, give myself a little bit of a marker. Then I'm gonna to go to the left of that about two inches, make a dot, and to the right about three inches and make a dot. So this is gonna be about five inches long. I'm just gonna connect these right here with a horizontal line. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to the bottom, in the bottom left side of my canvas. 
So if this is about halfway up or down the left hand side, I'm going to go about, if this is about a quarter way, I'm just a little bit above that. So somewhere in this vicinity is where my next marker is. I'm going to connect here to, to here with a diagonal line like this kind of diagonal. <laughs> it doesn't have to be perfect as you can see. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the on the right hand side and let me just use my brush as a measuring tool so I can show you how high up the other one is. So if I have this one about this high, on the other side I'm going to go maybe about a half of an inch to an inch higher than this one. So somewhere in this vicinity. So this one is about a third of the way up my canvas. And this one is a little bit lower. And then I'm going to connect here to here with another diagonal line. Something like that. And then what I'm going to do is from here, I'm going to draw a horizontal line that is, uh, let's see, if this is halfway into my canvas and this is a quarter way, I'm a little to the right of that. So somewhere in through here. I'm going to connect here to here with a horizontal line. It might be a little bit tipped. The, the photo is a little tipped. <laughs> the photo reference I'm using is a little tipped, but that's all right. Um, so whatever, if you want to make yours a little tip, that's totally fine. And then I'm going to go over to, um, back over to this right and come down maybe about an inch and a half. And I'm going to give myself another horizontal line, but this one's only going to be maybe about an inch and a half. And this one is a little bit lower than this one. And I think theoretically they might kind of slightly line up diagonally. Um, but if they're not exact, don't worry. I think this is a handmade kind of birdhouse, so it might not be perfect in its, in its architectural ways. <laughs> then I'm going to connect here to here with another diagonal type of a line like this. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little diagonal line from here like this. This is maybe about a half of an inch. And then up in this vicinity, I'm going to come down from here maybe about, I would say, a half to three quarters of an inch. I'm going to connect here to here. So again, just another diagonal line. And then I'm going to connect here down to here. Maybe this goes up just a little bit from there. So something like this. And again, these don't have to be perfect, perfectly symmetrical. I'm going to come down from here about an inch and a half to two inches, something like that, connect here to here. So lots of just long shapes right now. <laughs> now I'm going to, this is going to be like the underhang of the birdhouse and this is the outside roof line. I'm going to um, make some additional lines down in through here. So I'm going to come directly below this corner. So until I'm maybe about two inches away from the bottom and I'm going to go to the right just a little bit. So something right about here. From here, I'm going to go almost halfway between here and the end. So this is halfway. I'm a little to the right of that and then connect these two with a diagonal. Now I'm going to make a horizontal line from here to um, I would say it almost lines up perfectly with, with this marker up and through here. And then I'm going to connect here to here with another diagonal. And you can see this is not perfectly um, horizontal. It tips a little bit to the right, which is fine. I'm going to take this. I'm going to do a vertical line about an inch. And then I'm going to connect here to the edge of my canvas like that. I'm going to come down from here a little bit farther than here and then connect here to here with a diagonal. I'm now going to come from here to about here. So this is going to be maybe, uh, I would say about two inches to the left of here and then straight down somewhere in through here and maybe a little bit closer to the bottom of the canvas than this one is. A tiny bit, not, not much at all. And then this is going to be like a little there's going to be all kinds of moss and stuff in through here, but there's a little bit of a ledge that is overhanging um, for the bird to have fun on, I guess. So I'm going to do a little diagonal line like this and then come down just maybe about a half of an inch. I still have more room towards the bottom of my canvas that I want to reserve. And then I'm going to take this and connect it to over here. So you should have a little sliver of the canvas left down in through here. From 
This corner, I'm gonna come down just a little bit and then give myself a horizontal line to the edge of the canvas. Then I'm gonna connect this corner to this corner, like this. Almost done with the birdhouse. The only thing I have left to do, well, we're gonna be doing the hole and all that stuff later, but these are just gonna be our basic shapes. There is a shingled roof. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make three little diagonal lines uh, about equally spaced apart coming up. So one, two, three. And then I'm just gonna take from the point of that and connect it to, um, that could go almost up to the top. This is gonna go right to this corner here, like that. And this is gonna go right to this corner, like that. And then I'm going to draw my bird. So my bird, I like to give instructions when a lot of birds, you can start with two basic shapes, which is the shape of an egg and a circle. And the egg is representational of the body with the pointy part of the egg pointing towards the tail. And then the circle you can start any bird head with. So the birds are gonna have different length necks, different size feathers and so on but you can usually start them all, especially when they're on the profile, like we're seeing this one, with the shape of an egg and a circle. So I'm gonna start my egg shape for the body. I'm gonna to come to the right of this corner about an inch and go up about an inch. That's gonna be the pointy part of my egg. I'm going to um, come, I would say maybe, we'll, we'll take it from this corner here. I'm gonna go up another inch. I'm just gonna give you a bunch of markers and then we'll just connect those markers. So then I'm gonna go about halfway between here and the top of my canvas, which takes me about, I would say, to here. And then I'm gonna to go to the right about an inch, somewhere in this vicinity. And I'm gonna go maybe up another inch and over about two inches, something like this. So I just gave you a bunch of markers that we're gonna hit along the way. So here we go, this is my point of my egg, I'm going to drop it down, going to come up to here. This is the chest of my bird. I'm going to curve it around, hit my other marker, and then curve it back down to the edge of my, or the point of my egg. I'm going to do a circle now, right in this vicinity. It's going to overlap this area here. My circle's probably about an inch and a half wide by an inch and a half tall. So I'm just going to make a circle in this vicinity. And remember, we're just using chalk, so the chalk is not gonna give you perfectly executed edges, so we're just going for some little basic shapes. I'm gonna put a little beak on in, in here, and I will make that beak look much better when I <laughs> go to paint it. I'm gonna put a little crown on my bird, so I'm gonna bring this back in this vicinity. I'm gonna say this is almost maybe straight back like this, and then just kind of Give myself a little zigzag at the back of that. And then I need to connect my crown with, or my head with my back of my neck. So I'm gonna take it from about here and just dip that down like that. So that'll give me, maybe pull that out just a little bit further. There we go. That'll give me my crown and the, the neck. I'm gonna take my small round with a little bit of water and erase some of these guidelines so you can see what just happened. So if I erase this interior circle and the interior part of that egg, you're gonna see the shape that I just created. I do wanna make a, a, one more little connection here between here and here so that it doesn't have such a um, bobbly neck. <laughs> so there we go, something like that will give me that exterior shape. I'm gonna now put a wing and a tail. So I want my wing to kind of come out about mid um, egg somewhere in this vicinity and it just kind of comes out like that. I'm going to just bring it back and then bring down a couple of little additional points that will um, make feathers on. <laughs> and then I'm going to put the tail. So the tail, I'm just going to go to the right of my point of my egg, I would say about an inch somewhere in through here. And then my tail comes almost halfway down my roof line. So if I kind of take halfway between here and here and somewhere in about here, looks pretty good, I can connect here to here with a little bit of a curved line and then this little pointy part, I can take this and bring it down on this left side and then I could just give these little bumps for the end of the tail, something like that. 
and you can always erase this line and you could erase that little egg too. So that will not be needed as we go through the painting process because I'll show you, we're going to be painting the parts of the bird on top of it. And then I just need a little handle for my for my birdhouse. So this is going to be behind my bird. So it's going to come, I would say maybe somewhere in this vicinity. So halfway between like maybe the neck and, and the bottom of the wing. And I'm going to go maybe about an inch to the left of here. I'm going to just give you some markers. Um, I'm going to go from the corner of the house in through here. And then this kind of comes in between here. So I'm going to just give a loop like this and then another loop like this. And that's all I'm going to be doing for my outline. I'm going to be using my number eight round brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can make any little adjustments that you feel are necessary. Put away your draw utensil and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm going to do for the next step is I'm going to be painting the base coat of my objects. I'm going to be using my number eight round brush to paint, but I'm going to use my number two bright brush to pre-mix a couple of custom colors. So in this step, I'm going to be using all of my colors except for gray. So black, red, green, blue, brown, yellow, and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be painting the base coat for the bird with just red. I'm going to be creating a custom green blue color for the roof and then I'll be creating a custom light brown color for all of the wood pieces including the handle. So I'm just going to start with my bird with red paint to get that going and we'll get that to to dry or to um, start its drying process and we'll go and make the other colors while it's drying. So I'm not doing any fancy brush stroke here. I just want to get into that tail or the wing um, little tips in through here and just give them a little, almost like a pointy edge to them. We have a ton of work to go on the bird, so don't feel like you need to get these edges perfect or anything along that line right now we're even going to probably bump into it a little bit when we go to do the base coat of the roof and the and the birdhouse and all that good stuff. This is just getting us started and getting the process of painting this cute little bird um, going. When it comes to the beak and the, and the face, if you felt that you needed to um, go into a smaller brush to just get this basic shape on, that's totally fine. Um, I will be, when I do my details, I will definitely be um, using a smaller brush, but this is, you know, putting that base coat on, I don't need to, to be perfect, so I definitely tend to um, steer more towards using minimal um, tools as opposed to using teeny tiny tools on this base coat because, again, I know I've got so many um, steps to go that will will help fix any little edges or anything like that that might have not come out perfect. <laughs> and I do a lot of times leave a little bit of my um, outline showing so that way I don't run the risk of making my object too big. I didn't do the legs and the feet yet because that'll be a small detail that we tackle towards the end of the painting. So that's my that's my bird. Once I've got that on there, I'm just going to wash and dry this brush and then I'll make a couple of additional custom colors for the other objects. So I have pre-mixed my custom colors on my palette here. This uh, greenish blue here is the color that I'll be using for the rooftop. How I achieved this was I used my green oxide blue, good amount of blue, maybe almost half and half a touch of black, not that much, just a touch, and a teeny tiny bit of white paint. So the blue and the green is going to make a bluish green color, the black is going to turn it a little bit darker, and the white is going to help a little bit with the opacity so it's not too see-through. So once I get that little recipe going, I just start mixing it, and then I see if I need to adjust it any. So I'm looking at it with the mixture I've already done and it's looking pretty spot on like I got it on the first shot maybe a touch more blue 
in there, but you can certainly adjust it into whatever tone you want. It will dry a little bit darker than it is when it's wet, so you just plan for that. So that's looking pretty good. And then once I've got that color, just make sure I've got it spun around good enough here. Once I've got that color, I'm gonna make a custom color for my wood. So the wood in the photo that I'm depicting has tons of different colors in it. Lots of green or like greenish yellow type of hues, lots of dark browns, lots, lots of rusty kind of colors. So I don't wanna get lost and overwhelmed by all those tonal shifts and color variations right coming out of the gate. So I'm just gonna, I've picked a color that I feel is a dominant color in all of the pieces of wood. So I'm gonna go with that as my base coat and then we'll build all the variations on top of it later. So the color that I have pre-mixed here, I'm gonna call it light brown because it is lighter than my burnt umber. How I got to this was brown and white, a little bit of white. If I just used brown and white, it would be too soft of a color for me, like almost leaning more towards gray. So I also added yellow and red, which is adding orange to my mixture. And this is gonna give me this nice, rich, light brown type of color that is not too yellow, it's not too red, it's not too tan, it's just right. <laughs> and then once I've got that color, I'm going to uh, color in my wood objects first. I do have some outlines that I want to, or guidelines that I want to be mindful of. So even though I'm painting all of these with the same color, I am going to be leaving the evidence of my chalk mark. So that way, as I go to build my other details, I've got that to, that to play with. I'm also going to be painting in a directional brush stroke. So what I mean by that is this is gonna be wood grain. So what I'm gonna do is when I have the opportunity, I'm gonna paint it in the direction that I feel the wood grain is going. I do have good um, coverage with this color. So the, the, uh, the directional brush stroke is not gonna make a huge difference, but if you do have something like this that um, you can detect uh, some sort of, like I do it a lot with wood because I can, um, I've got the opportunity to start the wood grain on that base coat, you can certainly do that. So you can leave some areas a little bit thinner. I'm noticing I do have great, pretty good coverage. So my, my brush stroke is really not gonna matter too much. But in the picture, this section here, the wood grain is going left to right. So I could just sit here and go left to right with that brush stroke, same thing right down there. When you get to the corners of the wood though, it's not as easy to do that, but again, if you have the opportunity, great. And you can even leave some of that gray color showing underneath, so that'll give you um, just the, the start of the wood grain, but again, not necessary. Just if you can, great. If not, no big deal. Uh, this whole section in through here, my wood grain is actually going diagonal, <laughs> so this works out well for me because that's the big section of this, um, of this area so and might have my um, lines my my edge work is going in that direction so that makes it pretty convenient for me except for in this little section back here so I'm just gonna uh, uh, tackle this by making the paint wet and then going in a diagonal direction again I'm not really terribly concerned about these corners because I know that I'm gonna be tackling them um, in, a, in another step, I just am looking to get my this base coat started. And again, if I have light spots and dark spots, that's awesome. So especially again with the wood grain, I'm trying to, at this point, I'm kind of using a little bit less paint than I was down here just because I'm digging how I'm getting some of that um, wood grain to appear. And then I'm just, this is the edge. So that's gonna meet that under edge. So just kind of going in that direction with my brush stroke. And again, just allowing for um, even coming out of the gate like this where you feel that, you know, even though you're just doing a base coat, you can still start to work on those details. This whole area is going to be covered with moss and stuff, so I'm not terribly concerned about that. 
This section in through here, the wood grain is going horizontal, uh, which is a little bit tricky. So I'm not sure how much of it I'm gonna uh, go for, but we're gonna we're gonna give it a, a shot here and just bringing it in a horizontal direction like this. The only trick or the only difficult part about doing this is that initial line that I did. I just want to kind of pull it when it's wet so that way um, it doesn't look too much like I outlined that. But we've got the border coming too so if that doesn't work out perfect for you that's okay. And then just kind of bringing this almost to where it's meeting in this little seam area which will have a super dark shadow in through there so that's fine and then these two borders in through here these the wood grain goes right with the um, the direction of this piece so I don't know what happens in through here because there's some little um, foliage stuff so I'm just gonna paint that in that direction and then again I'm leaving a little bit of my the evidence of my chalk mark so that way I can use it to my advantage in future steps and then just going back and forth up and down in through here so i left myself a great place or a great uh in a good position for my next step on these uh objects because i can still see where each one kind of meets each other so i'm going to wash and dry my brush and i'm going to go oh i need i forget sorry i need to use that same brown for the handle I'm not going to wash and dry. I did wash and dry my brush, but I'm going into the same color. So you don't have to wash and dry your brush. And then I'm just going to paint this. I can't, I mean, I can detect what um, way the, the wood is going, but I'm just painting this in because it's, we're going to add all of the texture to this little section later. When I get to where uh, I'm meeting the tail, I'm just going to kind of pop a little bit in between those little, or the uh, wing feathers in through here and then just kind of uh, paint it in. Again, this section has tons of texture on it. I don't know what kind of wood this little handle was made out of. It's super cool, it's bent. It's Maybe it was like a young branch that whoever built this birdhouse was able to bend it somehow. I don't know, it's super cool though. <laughs> and then I'm just going to the edge, bringing it right to my uh, little birdie in through here. And then now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush for my for my roof. So wash and dry my brush. And I don't even see in the photo a detection of the roof color over here. I think that this little molding piece is actually um, on top of the edge of the, the roof shingles. So I'm just gonna paint this in a solid color because there's lots of, um, uh, we're going to be putting like tiers or layers on this roof with the shingles and then we'll put some um, fun wood grain in it but it's too, it would be too complicated I think to start the wood grain right now so I'm just going to paint it in a solid color and we'll add all of that later so I'm just bringing it to the edge and bringing it right to here and if you can detect the the direction of the brush stroke right now it's all right because it, even if it's not the correct direction because we've got lots of stuff to go on here and then I'm just going to bring this up right in between those little tail feathers so you can so it's going to look like the tail is on top of the roof not the roof on top of the tail <laughs> and we'll uh, we're going to finish the roof before we do the tail so that way um it'll always look like the tail is on top of the roof. That's one of those things that I think um, escapes some artists when they're, when they're painting certain um, objects like this, always making sure I feel it's important to make sure that you've got the object that's on top looking like it's on top and not as if it was painted around. So sometimes, you know, a lot of times I will wait to even put that object on top. Like I could have opted to wait until we were entirely done with the house and the the handle and stuff before I even put that outline of the bird. But the bird takes up a lot of area on this one and I felt it would um, it would work out this way. So I, I opted to do it. There's lots of forgiving foliage and little green mossy stuff around the bird. So we'll use that to our advantage if we need to. And then once you've got this done, we're gonna be using the, um, 
I think I'm going to use, I'm going to use uh, probably this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this number eight round and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the wood grain on the house, the brown wood grain. So that'll be the this middle section, this section, this, but this is minimal because there's stop, moss going on that. This little section, this under section, and these two sections. I'm going to be using my number eight round brush. I might break out my uh, number two bright brush as well if I have difficulty making the wood grain the way that I want to. I'm going to be using my uh, wood grain, brown, black, white, yellow, and maybe a little bit of red. I also noticed that I missed a piece of my roof. So I'm gonna right now just use a little bit of my roof green in one little section here so I can know where I'm headed. <laughs> so I'm picking up a little bit of my roof green. This little diagonal line in through here is the side piece to um, the roof. <laughs> so I'm just gonna paint this over with my roof green piece, my roof green color. So I, I just, when I was planning out this step, I'm like, wait a minute, I think I missed a little piece of my roof. So we're just gonna paint it right now so you guys can see what I'm, uh, the correction I'm making. There we go. Now I'm going to wash my brush <laughs> and I'm gonna start tackling this wood grain. So the wood grain has a lot of shadows and or the the house itself has a lot of shadows. There's a bunch of shadows underneath here. Um, there's a big shadow down in through here. There is gonna be a hole and we'll put that hole later. There's also some wood like pillar type things right next to the entry for the bird um, in through here. And then there's a couple of pillars that are kind of coming off the corners. We'll do those later because those are in front. So I think I mentioned I'm using black, brown, my light brown, yellow, red, and white. I'm gonna start with a little bit of black and brown on my brush to get these shadowy areas in place. And then um, I'm gonna pull them out with wood grain type of texture. So this has a big shadow in through here, right up along this edge in through here, even kind of the wood grain is pretty dark as it goes up that corner as well as right underneath this roof line in through here. So once I have it in its designated area, I can just kind of pull it out like this. You can even use a little bit of water on your brush and that's gonna give you the ability to make almost like little streaky type of marks, which will help to make it resemble more wood grain as opposed to just um, a soft blended type of um, paint. So that, that's kind of my trick with um, going in through there. Up and through here, I do want a couple of little pieces of wood grain coming out. So I just am moistening kind of that edge and then just pulling these little streaks, not totally straight out. You can even um, like kind of curve them a little bit. That'll give you the appearance of like a knot in the wood. Um, if you want there to be almost like a yellowish orange type of color to it, which I'm seeing a lot in this back corner. I can pick up a tiny bit of red and yellow on my dirty brush and even with a little bit of water. If you have a lot of black on your brush though, you might want to um, get rid of the black off of your brush, but I didn't have much on mine, so I'm pretty safe with just kind of adding a little bit of an orange hue. So again, this is just red and yellow, and I'm just kind of with a little bit of water on my brush, kind of uh, adding this little bit of a hue to the wood over on this side. I see that a bunch down in through here too, but I've got to put a little bit of wood grain. So I just wipe my brush off. I'm picking up a little bit of black and brown with a little bit of water on my brush, and I can just kind of streak in a little bit. I'm actually, I think I'm gonna to switch to my small bright. I'm not feeling like I'm getting my control I want with that brush. So black and brown is on my brush in order to give me my wood grain in through here. And again, not not totally straight, just, you know, you can curve it when you want. You can put little um, 
lines, curved lines. Now I'm gonna wash my brush and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of red and yellow with a touch of wa water. So this is gonna give me that little bit of an orange type of a hue to the wood itself. And if you felt that you wanted it to go a little bit lighter, you could certainly add a bit of white as well. But I caution you with that, that you don't wanna necessarily do that too, too soon. Um, so I'm gonna just go through and add do this similar process on the rest and then once I, I just picked up some of my wood brown, um, once I've got this on I can go ahead and add little additional highlights if I feel that they're necessary. Um, I am going to, I'm going to con continue with my small bright and if I feel I need to go back to the um, round I will. I see a lot of darkness underneath here so I've got black and brown and I'm coming right into this crease of the um, of the house. I'm like, what is it that I'm painting? Um, and it's really dark in through here. So I can be pretty darn aggressive coming down this whole little um, edge in this inside here and through here. This goes all the way down to the bottom. And but before it dries, I definitely want to make sure that I kind of blend it out to the right so it's not just a solid line so i'm just kind of uh, rubbing it on the right side of it and then i can just pull it out into these um, almost uh, grain type streaks in through there so that looks pretty good i think i want to bring this down to my line here now that i've got that understanding of how far down i want that to go that looks pretty good. This, I definitely need some more of my red and my yellow. So I'm picking up red and yellow just to, again, add those bits of additional color streaks within that. Picking up a little bit more yellow on top of this. And my yellow is chrome yellow. So it has a lot of green type of hues in it, which is why I was using the red to kind of counterbalance that. You could always use some brown. You could, the brown for me, uh, helps to make it look more green, <laughs> but um, you can certainly fiddle with that as much as you want. I just put a little bit more of my black and brown on my brush because I'm seeing that I want a little bit more of the wood grain itself to be carried in through here. And then I'm picking up a little bit more of my red. So I just kind of keep uh, my red and my, um, my custom brown, that light brown. Um, I just kind of add, keep adding these little tones in through here until I feel that I have accomplished a nice wood grain look to it. I start with that standard, uh, put the the dark, the dark areas on and then just feed into the wood grain area. So I still feel like I want a little bit more darkness in through here. So I keep amping up that darkness and then I'm going to move on to the main part in through here. This is a little bit larger of an area, so I think I am gonna start it with my um, my eight round, because I feel like uh, it's almost a pretty uh, decent gradient of the oranges and um, the orange tones, and then it gets a little bit more yellow down in through here. So I am gonna start with my black and my brown. I have my, my larger brush now that I'm working with. I'm gonna put this dark, Oops, I just <laughs> went totally into the other piece. Um, my black and my uh, brown, just to get a good shadow kind of going on underneath here and to start that wood grain type of look to it with just kind of sporadic dark marks that will help me to accomplish that. I've got, you know, some sporadic dark marks over in through here. So I'm just going to use my brush maybe with a little bit more water on it just to give myself some good little dark areas. I've got some dark areas down in through here just with almost just the grain. That looks pretty good. And now I'm going to, I don't care what happens to your, again, there's going to be moss and all kinds of stuff in through there. So I don't really care about that part. Now I'm going to, uh, I'm washing dry my brush. I want to add some of those orange type of tone. So I'm going to pick up some orange, I mean some red and yellow. I don't have orange on my palette, red and yellow. And I'm going to start um, rubbing this in. So I feel like there's a bunch of this in through here. 
and it's pretty darn bright down in through here so I can be pretty aggressive with um, with the amount of yellow that I'm using because I'm seeing a lot of it on the birdhouse itself down in this area so you could you know as you're going through this process if you if you wanted yours lighter or darker or maybe you wanted a green or a purple or a blue birdhouse you can make it into whatever tone you want the red and the yellow for me is transparent so what this is going to do it's going to take on the brown underneath and it's going to add this orange type of hue to it and i'm using the colors at the same time in order to give it more of a organic type of appearance as opposed to a solid color and this just again for me, I love using multiple colors at the same time because it helps me to get that organic kind of look. And because my paint is transparent, because I use a student grade paint, it allows me to blend it right on. It allows me to use it pretty much like a, a glaze of sorts. Um, I definitely need a bunch in through here. Being pretty aggressive with the orange tones I'm getting from the yellow and the red because I'm totally digging it <laughs> and what you know when you dig something and and it's visually appealing to you just roll with it allow yourself to the liberty of making it more bold of making it more the that reference is making it the way that it's visually appealing to you I'm so digging that I'm going to put a little bit more um, of my uh, light brown color but actually that's too light I'm gonna add a little bit more brown up in through here so this is the burnt umber so when I say brown I'm talking burnt umber and when I say light brown it's gonna be that custom maybe a touch even of black I feel we can get away with a little bit more black up there and then I just want to kind of enhance maybe some of these uh, bark marks so I'm going with a little bit of black red and yellow on my brush and just kind of enhancing some of these little bark marks in through here just you know to again feed my my eye a little bit more and you could certainly make yours again more or less whatever is working for you that's that's where you should that's where you should bring it I just want to make sure that I have painted the whole thing so as I'm going through this process I'm seeing some areas that I my paint didn't sink in as much as I wanted it to so I'm just using this opportunity to get that to, to happen I definitely want maybe a couple more little dark streaks up in through here for the wood grain and again that's going to be a visual preference if you want your wood to look soft and not as textured as mine then go for it just make it soft looking don't make it as textured as mine um, I'm thinking that looks pretty good I do want to put maybe just a little bit more lightness on uh, these guys over here on the right I'm going yellow and red maybe just a little bit more yellow I can um, at any point start using a touch of white too but I'm gonna hit the um, those little borders first before I decide if I'm gonna put any white on there so the little borders in through here um, this one is looks darker to me so I'm gonna put some uh, black and brown on this guy here. I think it's being shadowed by um, the moss or something. I'm not quite sure why this one is so dark, but I'm going with it. There's going to be some moss on this edge in through here. And again, I'm just using kind of watered down with a little bit of black and brown on my brush to give myself this little bit of a uh, wood streak type of a appearance on this side it looks like this side's a little bit lighter so I'm going to go for my light brown plus a touch of white and give myself a little bit that's where I'm using bringing out that white a little bit and again there's moss all around these edges so if you do something that you don't like don't worry we've got <laughs> we've got moss coming later so this is just my light brown plus a little bit of white and just kind of bringing this up and through here that looks great and then do I want light anywhere else? I'm thinking that that looks pretty good. So I would just kind of um, let it dry, make sure I've got all my edges that are gonna be visible, um, make sure that they are attended to. This is all gonna have moss. Moss is going over there. I think I'm good. I'm going to, um, what I, this I'm gonna hit, this I don't even need to hit. I just wanna make sure I get everything. This I'm gonna get with my mossy stuff 
um, and this table. I think I think that's good for now. So I'm going to um, use my small bright brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry that brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are going to finish the roof and the handle. I'm going to be using my number two bright brush. The colors I'm going to use are black, brown, white, my custom roof green, and maybe a little yellow and red so we can get some of these orangey tones into that handle as well. So I think I'm going to uh, start with the roof and we might go back and forth, but I'm going to definitely start with the roof first. So I'm going to pick up <clears throat> some of my roof green plus a teeny tiny bit of black paint plus a touch of water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, the break between each shingle. The first one I'm going to do is just this bottom edge for here. So I have my roof color plus a little bit of black and this is going to give me just a little shadowed edge as this um, as it uh, bends inward or downward towards that other area. So just cleaning up this corner too even though there's going to be a piece of moss on top of it. So I'm going to do the same combination for each little um, um, shingle. So, oh, why did I just pick up white? I meant water. Hold on a second. I just picked up white without realizing it. Uh, so my roof color plus a teeny tiny bit of black plus a teeny tiny bit of water. And then I can just take it from this um, bottom little um, inlet in through here and just go across. So it doesn't have to be super duper straight. Again, this is not, um, I don't think, a roof line that it has to be perfect. This is something that somebody probably made in their garage wood shop, <laughs> so it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just gonna make this uh, bottom edge a little bit darker. So again, just a tiny bit of black plus my um, roof color. And again, same thing for the next one. If you need to uh, continue to use water, feel free to do so. Um, if you're feeling confident, just go for it without water on your brush, but you just need enough paint to, to guide you in. So the bottom corner and this top corner. And then when you meet the tail, just make sure if you're meeting the tail here or wherever you meet the tail, just make sure that color goes up in between and behind it. So again, it'll look like it is um, painted or the tail lays on top of it as opposed to being painted around it. So again, just black plus my roof color, a little bit of black, not a lot because I don't want it to go <clears throat> all the way black. I still want it to have that greenish tone to it. And then in through here, just cross right over. And when I do the highlight for the roof, this, um, this dark area that I'm doing will look even darker. So if it's not looking so much different than the uh, top part of the roof, it's okay. Because when we go to do the little highlights on the top of the roof, that will make it look much darker. So that's good in through there, maybe a little bit more on this upper one. We want it to look dark enough so we can see it anyways. That looks pretty good, bring it right to my tail and just go right over to here. So the top parts of the roof is gonna be lighter so I'm going to wash and dry my brush and it's going to be a combination of my roof green plus white. Roof greenish blue, whatever you want to call it. So um, I'm going to pick them up both at the same time on my brush. It's got wood grains and it's going to be brighter on this top. These top two um, shingles and this one are pretty light, but this one somehow is darker. It might be a shadow of something. It might be a shadow of the bird. I'm not quite sure. So I'm just going to do it as I see it in the picture. Um, so it's pretty darn light in through here. And then this goes right over to the bird itself in through here. And I'm not detecting much wood grain up in through here. This side over here has a little bit of lightness in through here. So I'm just trying to kind of follow the color pattern that I'm seeing. The top of the roof is going to be hidden by um, 
some moss and foliage and stuff. So uh, we're up and through here, it's just kind of some light color. Um, there is a little bit of darkness right up towards the top. I just picked, I wiped my brush off and picked up a little bit of black because I'm seeing a little bit of shadow underneath what's going to be the foliage up and through there. So just putting that in, in place. I'm going to uh, wash and dry my brush because I have black on it now. And I'm going to get these guys to go pretty darn light. This one is almost white over on this side. So I just washed and dried my brush and picked up white for this corner in through here. I'll pick up a little bit of my um, roof color right now just to get the illusion of the wood grain but it's pretty darn light right next to this tail in through here and then it's kind of like a little mishmash of the colors just to uh, give it a little bit of the illusion of the wood grain Ooh, there's a this is fun there's a bright part right in through here which tells me that this is the light underneath the tail so whatever this uh, the light source is over to the left, it's shooting through right underneath this tail. So that's a little um, thing that is going to make it look more three-dimensional and realistic is this one little sliver of light coming right underneath that tail. And then right here, there's a little shadow from the tail. So I went back to my um, roof green plus a tiny bit of black right in through here. So just those little tiny nuances, just if you have black on your brush and you want to go back to that green, just make sure you wash it. I went back to uh, my uh, custom green plus white just to get this in through here. So just those little tiny nuances um, can really help to make your painting look much more realistic than um, it just being a flat color. So just watching for those and being able to see those things helps make it look more real. Oops, that was the wrong area. <laughs> right down into here. Lost it, went into the wrong wrong shingle there. Um, so just watching those things will, will help elevate the painting, put a little bit more of my dark green in through here, and then the other two um, down in through here. There's some wood grain kind of coming in through here. I see like these little triangle type of marks. So I'm going to go with my um, my roof color plus a tiny bit of white paint. Not much. It looks like it's just kind of these quick little uh, dabbles of, <laughs> of um, grain in through there, a little bit lighter on the edge, and then it's pretty light in through here. So again, if, if you are looking to achieve more of a realistic look, being able to see these color variations. I mean, the, the roof color is all one color, or it has a dominant color, which is this bluish green. But as I'm going through adding these these little details in through here, I'm seeing it looks like there's a little bit of, of wood grain somewhere in through here. So I'm trying to incorporate just those those lighter areas that imply that the, that there's a wood grain and I'm trying to go in a similar direction that I see in the photograph. But I'm not going to get every single little piece exactly as it is in the photo, but if I want to give those realistic type of um, illusions, stuff like that is, is going to help do it. And then as I go down towards this one, I see it's pretty darn light on this left side, so I'm using more of my um, custom green plus white and I see that there's kind of like these streaks going across in this direction so again that's more of the wood grain so I'm just trying to include that that type of appearance for it and then it's a little bit lighter over here so I just picked up a little bit more white as it's kind of drying I can just pop in a little extra bits of lightness where I feel that it is um, translating as such in, in the photo. But I've got that directional kind of brush stroke with those streaks of similar colors leaving it lighter where I feel it looks lighter over here on the left. So I'm going to do a similar process to the wood grain on the um, piece above. I'm going to start with my dark and work my way to my light. So I see a lot of darkness. I'm going to go for brown and black down at the bottom in through here. This looks to be a very textured piece of wood. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to be using these kind of hatch uh, marks in order to achieve this um, really textured 
appearance. It looks like it's got a big shadow in the little pieces of bark on this bottom side. So this is black and brown and I'm going in a direction that I'm feeling and seeing in the photo. As I get towards this right hand side, I'm gonna put a little bit of water on my brush. I feel like they're kind of these long like streaky type of divots in the, um, in the bark type of marks. I'm not, again, it's pretty cool. It's got like lots of texture on this little, on this one little thing. So that looks pretty good in through there. This is where you can start also, um, I'm picking up some of my wood color, um, just kind of giving, if you feel like there's a little bumpy edge, I'm going right up to my chalk mark now because I don't need that chalk mark anymore. And then um, I feel like there's lots of highlight on this right side and on the top. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush because I have a lot of black on it. And I'm gonna use my wood grain plus white to start. And then I might incorporate some of that yellow and red as well. Um, I feel it's really, really light over here. And again, it's really kind of like this patchwork um, type of appearance, almost, um, I don't know how else to say it. It just looks really um, textured. So I'm just kind of dabbing the paint in and leaving some dark marks in between. Um, I feel like I might need a little bit more yellow uh, or orangey tones in this. So I'm gonna uh, add a little bit more of, um, so I'm gonna pick up my light tan yellow, red, and white. So this is similar to what I did in uh, the bottom wood grain. Uh, I'm just uh, allowing for additional colors being that yellow and red to give me almost like an orangey type of tone throughout here. And I'm bringing it in between those, uh, the dark kind of um, streaks that I had just made. And this again is just giving me a little bit of extra texture it's really light over here uh, right turning this corner in through here and then right along that edge and then right inside here it's a very light also um, so if this color wasn't working for you you can always pre-mix yourself a color like i just kind of spun mine around on my palette so i have a little bit more of an orangey type of tone so you can just kind of keep tweaking those little tonal values until you've got something that is visually appealing to you or something that you feel is representational to what you're seeing um, in the photo reference. And then once you've got this done, we're gonna use uh, this same brush for the next step. I just want a little bit more lightness right in through here. And then, um, so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the hole in the birdhouse and the table that the or the shelf or whatever the birdhouse is sitting on. I'm using my uh, number two bright brush. The colors I'm gonna use are black, um, brown. <laughs> I think I might use a little bit of blue, uh, white, and I'm not sure what other colors maybe red and yellow, but I'll call them out as I use them. So what I'm first gonna do is put a hole in my birdhouse. Uh, it's gonna be to the left of your center because we're seeing it kind of to the side. So I think kind of the best thing to do, if you go from this corner here and this corner here, it's somewhere in the middle of those two. And then my opening, I think is maybe about an inch and a half to two inches wide versus tall and I'm just going to do a circle to start with black paint and then I will add um, a three-dimensional element to it so it looks like it's not just um, a flat hole but it's got some depth in the wood but I'm going to just start with this and get this on. And it doesn't have to be a perfect hole because birds can chip away at the edges. Maybe whoever cut this out didn't, you know, do it perfectly. <laughs> so it doesn't have to be perfect. That's gonna be good enough for me. Now what I'm gonna do with this uh, black paint, I'm gonna add a touch of water onto my brush. I'm gonna put a little shadow underneath 
this area in through here. So a little shadow is going underneath there. Even just a little shadow underneath here. Just get this nice and dark. The I want it to appear that there is a ledge. So what I have to do is put a light area. Um, I probably brought this shadow up a little bit too far. Well, actually, I do want a shadow underneath this, underneath the birdhouse right here. So a little bit more black, but keep in mind this little angle I'm doing right here. So this little corner in through here is going to represent kind of the edge of the, the table, something like that. And you can even come over on this side and give yourself just a little faint line going across. That'll represent the top and the side of your surface. So the bottom part, or this little edge, I, I mean, you can really just have fun. I've got black on my brush right now. I think I'm going to pick up a little bit of um, brown, black and brown, and just give myself maybe a couple streaks in it, give myself that little bit of a wood texture. I mean, I'm hardly doing anything. Pick up a little bit of white, maybe, just to uh, put a little bit of... Uh, minimal kind of lightness in through there and then on my dirty brush I'm gonna pick up white and I'm gonna make this top edge really light it doesn't necessarily have to go all the way white but I'm definitely making mine on the lighter side so it speaks to maybe there's some nice sunshine and I'm gonna bring this all the way down to the edge of the table I don't want it to go all the way white but I definitely want it to be lighter especially at the top and towards this front edge. So once I've got that, I just need to get it to fade in somewhere in through here. So this is where I could use a touch of blue because it almost in the photo looks like there's either, either a reflection of the sky or this down on here. So it looks like there's a little kind of bluish hue to me. So tiny bit of blue, maybe a little bit of water on my brush. I just kind of get that to blend in and maybe look like part of that tabletop and then maybe a little bit more I would say brown and white just to kind of close off this edge in through here I kept that little shadow underneath the uh, edge over there and this you know again it's just wood grain so you could make it into whatever way you want I just picked up a little bit more black I feel like this should be a little bit darker in through here Give that little shadow illusion. That looks pretty. Now I gotta do the same thing over on the other side. <laughs> so I'm gonna wash my brush. I had too much, too many colors on there. So over here I had a little bit of black and brown and white is where I started that um, that lightness from, but that's not enough white. So just a little bit more white and just give myself that really lightness, but again, not all the way white. I do need it to or want it to look lighter than the background. So I'm gonna have to amp that up in a second and bringing it right to the edge of here. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more white. This side is so minimal. I don't really need to do much more than this <laughs> on this side. The other side was the side that was a little bit more visible. So now that I've got that, I'm going to, I think that's all I wanna do for that. I'm going to go back up to the bird hole part. I'm washing and drying my brush and I'm just gonna create a little inseam of the, the wood to tell us the thickness of that wood. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my light brown color and I'm gonna start about midway up this um, hole and just give myself kind of a curved type of line like this. My black is still a little wet, which I'm enjoying. I'm just gonna get this to kind of blend right in and kind of disappear right underneath that edge and then I can get this I'm just kind of dabbing this right now to give it a little bit of texture in through there and what I would probably do I feel like I want to oh, that looks actually pretty good <laughs> I'm gonna actually just lighten up just a tiny bit of this exterior edge so on my dirty brush I'm gonna pick up a little bit of red yellow and white just a teeny tiny bit and then just give myself just this little kind of roughed up edge a bit so this really reads as um, the outside and it's got a little bit of um, texture to it and if you felt that you wanted to put a little bit of the red and the yellow on the inside like just little streaks feel free to do so and then we're going to be using um, 
I think I want to use my um, medium, the number eight round for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this brush away, take out the medium round or the number eight round and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the first layer to the moss, which is all over the thing. <laughs> it's, we've got moss uh, between our bird and the house and through here. So there's moss on the roof line. There's moss all the way down each side of this, um, of the edges of the roof. And then there's a bunch of, I, I don't know if moss is the right word, but <laughs> we'll call it moss. <laughs> there's a bunch down in through here. I'm gonna use my number eight round. The colors I'm using are black, brown, green, yellow, red, and white. If I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So I'm gonna start down in through here. Think of this as, a, this is a little platform of sorts. We'll call it the bird's lawn <laughs> or front porch. And there's um, some dark, almost like bushes <laughs> back in through here. And then it all kind of spills out over the sides. So I'm going to start with some green and black on my brush because I want there to be some really dark areas. Um, it appears as if from like corner to corner we've got a little bit of a hill of sorts and then there's this a, a bunch of dark greenery um, back in through here. I'm doing it with uh, black and green right now. I will be adding lots of um, additional little information to it on a future step, but this is just gonna get me started, give me a nice dark base to build dimension on top of. Um, so I'm just kind of tapping it in, giving myself a very carefree kind of brush stroke. I wanna make sure that I cover little um, corners that are in need of being covered. <laughs> um, can put some over in through here, wherever you feel you want to incorporate this dark stuff. Um, I do feel that it kind of spills out over the sides, the darker of the um, foliage, mossy stuff. So I'm gonna just kind of pull a couple little pieces over this edge in through here, and then same thing over here. So just kind of bringing this out, uh, little bits in through here down in through here. Then there's um, there's gonna be a couple of pillars that are gonna come kind of in through here and here. Uh, so there's some dark area down behind those uh, pillars somewhere in through here. So I'm just using, again, still some more of that black and green on my brush just to kind of it set the stage for this other darker greenery down in through here. And then up at, and you can certainly cross it over um, into that uh, underside if you want to. We'll put some, we'll close all, all that off where it needs to be closed off in a little bit. This whole um, porch area, uh, I think actually I want a little bit more of this dark stuff in through here. I'm going to put a little bit lighter tone up and through there. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to use just the green oxide um, for this mid section in through here. So green oxide. I'm just going to kind of tap it in. This will be um, my base for the other mossy stuff, the, the landing area, if you will, um, in through here. And I, you can overlap it around these little edges. Again, it's just messy uh, stuff for the bird to enjoy and have a soft landing or whatever. <laughs> We're going to put more on later, but that'll, that'll get us started in that area. So up on the edges in through here um, and at the top, I feel like there's um, some darker stuff on this bottom edge in through here and then it gets lighter and more yellow and there's greens and yellows and oranges in the, the outer edges. So in the bottom stuff, I'm gonna use that green and black combination. So black and green are going on my brush and it's just kind of tapping it in, just these little kind of right along this seam. I don't need to do much at all, just kind of tap it in along this seam, almost just think of it as you're hiding the seam. You don't need to do much other than just give this little, little tiny bits of uh, information in through here. 
uh, you know, steer more towards black because that'll give you more dimension as opposed to the green. That looks pretty good in through there. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. So in through here, black and green, just gonna maybe pull a little bit down in through here. And again, I'm just kind of tapping my brush, giving myself these little messy edges. Uh, you can pull it down as far as you want. I'm just really kind of um, disguising that edge a little bit and just kind of go, you know, putting down the base for what will be some, some fun um, additional greenery as I go through this process. That looks pretty good. Get this little corner in through here. I feel like I've got good stuff over there. That looks pretty good. So now I'm going to uh, wash and dry my brush and I'm going to go in for the stuff up top. So I'm going to make a, a custom orange color and we'll be using that plus um, maybe some brown or some green. <laughs> so I have pre-mixed my custom orange on my palette here. How I got to this is red, yellow, and white. So red and yellow is going to make orange. And then I added a touch of white to help with the opacity and just to soften it up a little bit. So this is the color that I'm going for. I'm just going to use a little bit of this here and there with some green and maybe a little bit of brown. But again, this is the base coat. So I want it to be a little bit darker than um, than the end result is going to be. So I'm just kind of kind of tap sporadically this color. Maybe it goes a little bit in, in here. In a minute, I'll introduce the other colors. I just kind of wanted to get this on first and then I'll, um, I'll introduce the other colors as well. So again, just kind of tapping it down so I can have this color intermingled with my other colors as I uh, go through the process. Definitely a whole bunch in through here, underneath my birdie in through here. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Uh, maybe just a little bit back in through here as well. That's looking pretty good. And now I'm going to not wash my brush, just wipe it off on my paper towel. I'm going to pick up green, yellow, and white. <laughs> green, yellow, and white. Give myself maybe a little bit more white than that. Uh, give myself just intermingling of additional kind of little pieces here and there. Uh, this the top edges seem a bit more colorful to me. Um, there is a colorful area in that um, little porch area of, of down below, but up here I feel like there's more colors um, than this other mossy stuff. So that's why this base coat that I'm doing, I'm trying to get some pretty good stuff in through here. Um, but again, you could really have you know as make it look different than mine or similar or whatever whatever works for you so just kind of tap in these additional colors in through here green yellow and a little bit of white this popping a little bit up in through here and we still have our bird to go so it, again this doesn't need to be super perfect right now i think i need more darkness in this upper area as well so i'm going to wash and dry my brush i'm going to pick up a little bit of um my black and brown as well just to get um, just a couple little dark areas in through here just so when I do go to build those highlights I I don't have to really work too much at these um, shadowy areas if I've already got them in place which I like to do a lot I like to get these little shadows in um, initially so because it to me sometimes it's just a lot easier to build to the light than it is to um, have to push these shadows in later so if you can get some on now fabulous if not we'll we'll definitely have an opportunity to to tweak and get them get some of them in later but just kind of popping in a couple of dark marks and then we're going to be using um we're going to use a our small our uh number two bright brush for the next step so you can just get ready All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the poles. I'm gonna be using my number two bright brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black, brown, my light brown, yellow, white, and that might be it. I might use a little red, but if I do, I'll, I'll let you know. So there are two poles inside or um, under the underhang right next to the 
um, opening. So we'll put those ones on and then there's two poles that kind of flank the um, exterior edges of the birdhouse. So we'll put those on and we'll um, do some details after we get them on there. These two inner ones are going to be way darker than the two exterior ones. So I'm going to start with a little bit of black and brown on my brush at the same time. Uh, yeah, I said brown and light brown, <laughs> but black and brown on my brush at the same time. I'm going to just go to the right of this and then up. Um, I would say it's maybe about a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch above this. It doesn't need to be perfect. It's just something that'll get us started. And then this is just going to, it's not super straight. They're just little um, makeshift little dowel type of um, poles. So something like this, going to just rub this in the left hand side. Looks to be a little bit darker than the right. So I'm just going to start it on that left with that um, black and brown and then I just pick up brown to do this right side so I might make the right side a little bit darker once I see how it looks when it dries but I'm thinning it out so it dries pretty quickly so we can um, put the uh, details on it on this step so I don't need to do a whole heck of a lot just kind of a nice dark base I'm gonna do the same thing for the next one with black and brown this one kind of just scoots in underneath all of this um, foliage and stuff. So I'm just going to kind of put a, a, um, a line in through here. There's actually the other pole is going to be uh, on top of this one. So I'm going to make a weird little shape here and you'll see what its purpose is going to be in a minute. But just going to make this weird little shape with black and brown like that. That works for me there. Let me just paint this in just a little bit more. It looked a little too unfinished for me. There we go. And I'm just bringing it down to that foliage stuff. You don't have to worry about how it intermingles with that yet because the foliage will paint back on top of it. Now I'm going to do my exterior poles. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. And I'm going to start with... Um, I'm going to start with my light brown color. That's where I'm going to take these initially. I'm going to take from this right corner in through here and this is going to come down um, if you go just a little bit to the right of where these two meet like this and then down right about where the table starts somewhere in through here and then just kind of connect these two with a really just organic kind of curved type of a line. I'm going to do then I'm going to come down about halfway between here and the bottom or halfway there between here and that tabletop, something like this, and then just give myself another arcing line. It crosses over this little corner in through here and then it, it just kind of gives, looks like a little um, curved bottom to it like that. And then I'm just going to paint it in with my, um, with my light brown color and we'll add some texture and dimension to it in a minute but I think that's a good place to start with that one and then I'll do the same thing for the other one so again just my light brown this one is going to start somewhere in this vicinity and this rides right next to or right in front of this other one so like this and then this one comes down if you find yourself the center of your opening somewhere into here and then just kind of travel straight down until you're about at the edge of the table somewhere in through here that I think is a good uh, marker to put you at and then it it goes kind of well, actually I probably brought it down a little bit too far but it's got a little bit of a slant just like that one in through here and then we can give it um, its opposing side like this so they're probably I would say about an inch wide is the width of these front ones give or take a little bit and it, they're not straight they're just it almost looks like they were branches at one point that just got cut into um, the right length <laughs> for this birdhouse so I think that was a smart move because birds like to sit on branches so <laughs> it's definitely an attractive element to this birdhouse for the little bird. So then I'm gonna just add my details onto these guys. I don't need to do much. I just wanna add a little maybe highlight in through here. So I'm gonna use that light brown plus a tiny bit of white and yellow. So, I mean, just a teeny tiny bit 
of both white and yellow and my light brown on my brush. That was probably even too light, so I just wiped my brush off, picked up more of my light brown, and just gonna kind of give myself just a little, little bits of highlights in through here, leaving a pretty dark edge so you can see this in front of that background, and then maybe just a little pop of a highlight right at the top. Might have been too light, so I just wiped my brush off and picked up a little bit more brown paint just to kind of dull that a little bit more. There we go. And wiped it with my finger. <laughs> and then in through here, I'm just gonna pick up some of, a tiny bit of light brown on my dirty brush and just pop in a couple of little light marks. I need to keep that dark edge so we can see it. So that's all I'm gonna do for that one. And then these guys in through here, I just need a shadow on the bottom of them and then just some texture and maybe a little bit of lightness. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of uh, black and brown. And these look pretty similar to the type of wood that the handle was made of. So I'm gonna just kind of tap in this uh, little bit of dark texture on the bottom side of it like this. I'm gonna do the same thing over in through here. So just tapping in a little bit of that dark texture down towards the bottom. This one I feel I need a shadow uh, at the top from this little foliage stuff. So I just picked up a little bit more black. I feel like there's a shadow up and through here. So again, that's one of those little elements that it does a lot <laughs> for the, for the um, you know, the story of it. It looks like there's a couple of little um, notches in it and through here. So just adding those, adding a couple more little dark marks coming up and through here. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna start adding some highlights to these to these poles. So I'm gonna pick up, um, I see a lot of yellow in there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna go with uh, my, my uh, light brown, yellow, and white, and just a little bit of each. Maybe just make sure I don't have too much on my brush. And then again, just kind of tap it down, giving myself this little bit of a highlight, yellow, um, light brown, and white. I see lots of lightness coming in through here. So just giving it that texture. And if you do too much, you can always, you know, let it dry and back it off. Um, but if you do too little, you can always add more. So, you know, I like to kind of go um, progressively through these kind of highlights and stuff because I feel that if I go all in too quickly, sometimes I just overpaint it and I, and I, you know, make the whole thing too light or too dark. Um, so I'm just kind of, I like to kind of just go progressively through it. I'm giving it what I feel to be a similar texture as what I'm seeing in the photo. Um, but, you know, again, you your speed might be much different than mine, so you can feel free to go at your, at your own pace. This one in through here, I really feel like there's a pretty big highlight over here on the right-hand side, so I'm definitely putting this in. And, I, you know, I'm choosing to do these poles now, but we still have the um, the foliage of the moss and stuff that's going to be coming behind it. So I know that that part is coming. So I'm not terribly um, concerned if I if I don't get this perfect now. I might have to do touch ups on it anyways because of that foliage that's going to be coming behind it. But I thought that this was a a good order for us to do this in just simply because of all the other things that we're doing. So it made sense to me to do these now. And then maybe just a little bit more highlight over here with the white and the yellow. I feel like there's a couple more bright pops in through here. And then I would, as always, just let it dry for a little bit, see if there's any additional um, marks that I want to make, make it lighter or darker. And then we're going to be using, uh, I think I'm going in for my small round brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this brush away, take out a small round and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step 
is we are going to be painting the facial features and the legs. I'm gonna be using my small round, my number two round. The colors I'm gonna use are black, red, yellow, and white. And if I go into any other colors, I'll let you know. But that's all I think I'm gonna use at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is I'll be using black paint to uh, put the mask or the facial marking into place, which will be the area where the eye is and then that black feathers that's around the beak, which in, um, in return will also give us an outline for the actual beak. While that's drying, I'll come down and I'm gonna do the legs and then we'll go back up and do some little details on the face. So I've got my small brush. I'm gonna be using black paint with a little bit of water on my brush so I can have it very controllable and have a nice small area to work with. So I've got this little dip in through here. I'm gonna just give myself a little um, thick area of paint in through there. I'm gonna take it, the beak, I'm gonna come up just a little bit of this neck in through here and just kind of give myself a little bit of a curved type of line like that. And then I can just kind of meet this in, in here. It doesn't have to be exactly the same shape as mine, just something similar will work out just well. So I'm gonna just reload my brush with a little bit, bit of black and water. I'm gonna put um, a little area for the eye. So I'm gonna just bring this back in through here and then just kind of give myself a little area with um, the edges of it are not a solid firm line. So I'm just kind of pulling out my brush a little bit to get these soft little edges around. So that way, again, makes it look a little bit more natural where I don't have a firm edge. Even this edge by the beak doesn't have to be as firm as I have it, um, but if you wanna make it firm, you certainly can. And then leading down this side in through here, this is gonna be just little, I'm gonna put a little more water on my brush so I can have just a tiny little feather. So I'm gonna take this and just kind of bring out these little itty bitty feathers coming down into this neck area. And I'm even going to bring it down just a little bit coming down that chest. So again, just an itty bitty bit of black paint on my brush. I'm gonna put a little bit more water so I can get it to sink into those little holes and just bringing it just a tiny bit down that neck. I think that looks pretty good. Making sure I've got enough in through there. Maybe just pull it up just a little tiny more in through there. There we go. And you could have bigger a bigger section for your um, mask, these cardinal birds, they come in a variety of different um, kind of markings on their on their face. It's, they have this typical, you know, black mask type of look, but some of the masks are a lot take up a lot larger of an area, so that'll be up to you. So that's looking pretty good for me there. Now I'm going to go down to my legs. I have black on my brush right now. I'm also gonna pick up red and white. So I'm gonna have three colors on my brush, black, red, and white. And I'm gonna give myself these just little diagonal uh, legs in through here. I need a little bit more black, that was too light for me. Um, so this one is maybe about an inch, inch and a half away from where that tail starts. This one I'm doing right now is on the other side of the body. And we are very fortunate with this photograph that <laughs> these feet are nice and hidden behind all of this little moss stuff. So we don't even have to paint little feet if we don't want to. If you felt that it was necessary to put a little, um, you know, toe coming out the back, that's fine. But mine are totally gonna get hidden with moss. So as they are in the picture, so I'm not worried about it. So again, black, red, and white. Um, and this one is on our side of the body. So you can actually put it a little bit in the feathers in through there and then just bring it down and tuck it behind your moss or right to the birdhouse. I don't know how yours is looking right now, if you have moss in this area or not. And then it looks like they get a little bit wider, almost like at the, we'll call it the ankles. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put a little width, a little bit more width down by that ankle and a little kind of light uh, uh, line. I'm putting a little bit more white on the top side of them so we can see them a little bit more. It looks like there's a little highlight in the 
photo too. And I'm going to pull in a little bit more red. It looks, I feel like there's a little bit of a pink hue to the um, legs. So I just pulled in a little bit more red just to make sure I'm staying true to my reference. And then once I've got that in there, I don't really need to do much more to those because again, they're going to be hidden by, uh, actually I'm going to put a little bit more black just at the, at the back side of it. I just picked up a little bit more black just so we can see them just a little bit more, a little bit more black on that back side. There we go. Now I'm going to uh, wash and dry my brush. I'm going to go back up to my um, face. I'm going to work on my beak. So the beak on this particular reference, uh, it opens up. It looks like somewhere up in through here. So I'm going to use just a little bit of um, my watered down black paint. And when I say watered down, I'm, I'm really using a lot of water. I, ink consistency, very transparent. I just want to use this as something that's going to help guide me into uh, this uh, opening for the mouth. So I'm seeing, I guess I need a little bit more than that so we can see what I'm doing. <laughs> um, it looks like the, the, the mouth kind of opens up at the top. Maybe it's, you know, in, in the uh, act of chewing or something right now, but it's dark, definitely up towards the top. I'm going to wash and dry my brush now. I'm going to put a little bit of red paint on my brush just to get this. I put a little bit of black in through here and now I'm just going to put the red to get it to stay nice and dark in through here. And I'm going to start adding my, my highlights to it, but I just want to make sure I have a good coat of red on here. Um, to be my base for all of the um, highlights and stuff I'm going to do. I'm going to make the top really light um, with some white and then we're going to put a little bit of yellow and some red and yellow um, and white as I come down. So I'm going to just start with a touch of white on my brush to get this tippy top really, really bright. So right in through here has got a bunch of white. So I'm just using the tip of my brush I just wipe my brush off on my paper towel and now I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of red so I can get it to just blend down here. So white and then just blending it down with a little bit of red. And then I'm going to um, also use this red, whatever remnants around my brush right now, I can use down here um, towards this base of the beak. I, I have to put more paint on my brush, so red and white. I had to put a little bit more paint because I was running out. So there's a light spot down in through here and right in through here. It's a little bit much. Um, that looks pretty good. This goes kind of almost all the way up to where the beak opens in through there. And then on this tippy part, there's a lot of white and yellow, so I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of white and yellow. And I have such a tiny brush. I'm working in such a tiny area. You only need a tiny bit of paint. And then I'm going to just kind of put this on in this area in through here and get it to blend out, making uh, that opening still be there, but just very subtle. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of red on my dirty brush and get this to blend down. So very little bit of paint on my brush, kind of just tapping the tip, picking up a little bit more red, get this bottom part to blend out in through here. And this opening looks a little bit too invasive for me. So I'm just bringing my highlight up a little bit closer to that opening because it's very subtle in the, in the picture. So that looks pretty good. I'm picking up more red. I feel like it's uh, nice and dark down here. So I just want to make sure that I capture that. And I feel like I need a little bit more white at the top. So just picking up a tiny bit more white, brighten up this little guy right in through here just to make sure that it shows that there's lots of sunshine on it. And this also gives helps with the form. So I've got my highlight at the top and then I can just blend it down. Um, and then I can just keep amping up those highlight areas as the paint dries and as I, I'm seeing, is that light enough? Do I need more yellow? Do I, you know, do I need anything more um, to sell my story? I feel like I need a little bit more um, yellow and white at that tip just to get it just a bit more bright 
in through here, maybe a little bit more white, and then I'll move on to the eye. So, you know, this is an itty bitty area we're working on, but you know, if you can, if you can get those little nuances, you're really going to make it look nice and realistic. And, you know, sometimes you're just using that, I'm just using the little teeny tiny tip of my brush. I'm not um, doing anything other than that. And you can keep fiddling with it as you see fit. I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to tackle that eye. I'm going to do it with a little bit of um, black and white on my brush at the same time. I might go into some blue too. I didn't say I was going to go into blue, but I might. So I have black and white on my brush. You could pick up some of your background gray too if you wanted to. And I'm going to give a little kind of exterior um, feathers. I'm picking up just a little bit more black. This is super subtle, so I don't need to do much. Just kind of giving myself this little hint of um, the feathers along here that just kind of outline that. That looks good. I'm going to do the same thing for a highlight on the pupil or on the eye itself. So just kind of giving myself a little curved line like that. And then I think I, gosh, I really want to go into the blue. I'm going in. I'm picking up a tiny bit of my cobalt blue on my dirty brush. I just want to give a little tiny hint of blue in here just because and now I'm going to wipe my brush off, pick up a tiny bit of white, give myself a little tiny sparkle, little itty bitty sparkle, just like that. And then you can just keep fiddling with it. So if you felt that you wanted more, you know, of an orange tone, you can pick up yellow and red. You can pick up just red. You can do whatever you want. I just picked up yellow and red, just put a little bit more vibrancy in this and then just fiddle. And we're going to be using our small bright brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this small brush away. If you can never stop fiddling on these little tiny things, <laughs> put this small brush away, take out a small bright and get ready for the next step. All right. So what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the feathers on the bird. I'm using my number two bright brush. The colors I'm going to use are black, red, gray, white, and yellow. And how I'm going to approach this is I'm going to be using my black and my red to create shadows in between the feathers and to give myself kind of like a roadmap as to the direction of the feathers, where I want the wing to be, where I want the tail feather to be and all that good stuff. And then we'll be progressively going towards light, the light colors, which would be our red, yellow, white, and gray in order to give um, dimension, texture, and form to the bird and its feathers. So I'm going to start with a little bit of black and red on my brush at the same time. I'm using this brush because I can get some nice clean lines, but I can also blend it out on as, as I'm going through the process. So I really want to separate the wings from the body and then we'll work on the tail feather. So for me, my, my wings are going to be kind of coming in through here. So I have my black and my um, red on my brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of start where the chest puffs out the most, come in maybe about a half of an inch to an inch or so, and start giving myself some, that was too black. Hold on, we don't want to go too black that fast. I wipe my brush off, I'm picking up more red. Um, start just kind of giving yourself these sketchily type of um, lines, bringing it all the way back into this area that we had um, put the jagged marks in place. So I've got this in through here, and then maybe we'll just bring this down, something like that. Now that I've got that kind of established where that's going to go, there's a couple of different sections of feathers. So there's really short feathers up and through here, really short feathers on the chest itself, but the wings have like almost these tiers to them. So I've got my black and red. I'm actually going to put a little bit of water on my brush too, just so I don't overdo this. I'm going to take it from here and I'm going to give myself a little, little kind of um, outline right around here. Think of this as kind of the shoulder area, taking it from um, kind of in through here and bringing it down towards the back. So we'll call this our shoulder, <laughs> so something like that. Then there's um, the two, one wing on this side and one on the other side. So they got to kind of converge somewhere in the back 
of the uh, body. So if you give yourself kind of a little triangle in through there, and then maybe another little um, kind of mark in through here, this will help you to um, get these side, the longer wings or the longer feathers kind of established. These go this way, and then the ones over here can kind of come towards that little triangular mark. It's just a little way of giving yourself um, uh, an idea of, you know, this is this wing and then we've got one coming over here. So I've got, um, I actually have a couple of points on mine. I have this one here for the right one and then this one for the left one. But if you don't have two points, you could certainly establish one if you wanted to. So again, just the red and the black. I can get a little bit more aggressive with these shadows in through here because they're towards the, the back. I'm going to put a little bit more um, black underneath here. This is my other wing from my other side, and I'm just going to kind of give myself a couple of little um, marks like that that will show that. And then this one here, I feel like maybe I want to bring this one down just a little bit like that to bring it down to this tip. I don't know what that is in the photo. It might be it might be part of this one and just underneath. So we'll just do something like that. It looks good to me. <laughs> and then there's another kind of layer of feathers before it hits the tail. So it kind of separates somewhere, I would say, in through here. So I'm going to give myself another little um, outline of sorts. And this just uh, really blends up into here. I'm going to now put a big dark shadow right underneath here, so don't get scared. <laughs> I'm taking the remnants on my brush and putting a big shadow right underneath here, and then it's going to fade into this light, lighter tip. So I'm just going to take it and I'm going to start. Um, if I don't, if I still have tons of paint on my brush, I'm going to wipe it off on my paper towel and then just kind of rub this down. So I created a gradient with it being dark up at the top. I actually think I want to go darker. I'm picking up a little bit more black because I want this to be super dark up and through here. Give lots of contrast. So this is going to be probably one of my darkest areas up and through there. I feel like this probably should overlap here too. That looks pretty good. So now that I've got that, I'm looking down at the tail to see if there's any dark areas. So there are dark areas elsewhere. Um, However, these are definitely the darkest. These give me my kind of roadmap. I also feel I want some sort of roadmap um, for the other um, feathers down on the tail. So I'm actually going to put some red and a little bit more water on my brush. So red and water and a lot of water. And I'm going to, it looks like there's kind of a, um, a big feather in through here. So with kind of like a grayish look to it. So I'm going to just use this mixture to uh, start the process of these. Um, I'm very cautious with this black. I just don't want it to go too black on me. Um, so these couple of tail feathers that I have in here, if you put the gray or the darker area up at the top of that feather, which is kind of opposite of what you would naturally think, you'd naturally think the shadow is underneath like I did up here. Um, but on these guys, they've got a grayish tone to their um, to the, the top side of their red feathers, which is pretty cool. Um, so I'm just starting that process and that also allows me to separate those feathers. There's also a big black feather underneath here that I'm seeing underneath the tail feather. It starts somewhere um, right in this little creasy area here. And I just want to make sure I get this right. It goes about half, oh, it goes about halfway between here and here. So somewhere in through here. And then I'm just going to kind of give it this long diagonal type of brush stroke in through here. And then it just kind of curves right like that. So this whole little feather here is totally black. So I don't know if that's, um, that's typical of these kind of birds that they have their tail feathers underneath are black, which would look really neat. <laughs> but I've never really looked underneath a cardinal before, but this particular photo is showing it. So I like to just go with what I'm seeing. So this goes right to the, um, to the roof line. So I'm just making sure maybe this is the shadow. This may not even be 
the feather for all I know. It could be the shadow on, but it doesn't look like it's the shadow because it, it hangs over this edge here. So it definitely looks like it's a feather um, in my professional opinion. <laughs> so that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna start adding my, my colorful areas to the bird, but I do need to put just a tiny bit of a shadow underneath here. So again, just my red, black with more red this time and um, a touch of water. And I'm gonna just put little bits of shadow underneath this body and through here. So you can utilize, you know, your color. So this would be red is my dominant color here. And then if I wanna add these shadowy tones, I could be using black or brown, um, but I, I see that there's some high contrast in the picture. So that's what I'm, I'm going for. I'm putting a little bit more right here because this uh, leg is on our side and that's looking pretty good. And then I'm thinking that that's, that's good for my dark areas. I'm gonna start adding my uh, light areas now. That looks good. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna be using a lot of my background gray and red as um, the highlight colors. And then I will go into a little bit more yellow and white as I proceed um, in the real vibrant areas. So I'm gonna pick up red with a touch of my gray because there's lots of, um, on these back feathers, there's a bunch of um, gray. So that's where I'm going. You, when, when I'm doing photo um, renditions, it does blow my mind <laughs> sometimes as I'm looking at them. I, I often discover things that I would have never thought. Like I, you know, I've painted a, a hundred cardinals in my day and I, every time I go to paint them, I'm like, gosh, there's really that much gray in their, in their wings. And you just, you know, just go with it. If you, if you're seeing it, do it. That's, you know, that's what the color of it is. So just roll with it. If you, you could use um, more, like, I feel like I want to go even more gray here with less red. Um, so I've already kind of mapped out the edges of some of these um, feathers, so, or at least the direction of them. So I'm taking uh, this gray and just kind of pulling it back on the, on the edges of these feathers. There's a, some lightness in through here. So this is the, the gray on my brush. If you feel the gray is too light, just add a touch of black to it. Like I'm feeling in this area, it might be getting a little bit too light. So I just added a touch more um, black to the gray mixture so it's not too, too white um, or too light, for instance. And then I'm just popping it in little sections back in through here, giving myself that texture on the back. Down in through here, I see some gray, but it's definitely not as light as my background. So I just added some more um, black to it. So I've got a little bit darker version of the gray and it's right in this little area in through here. And where else am I seeing it? So we've got here and then we've got a little bit of it up in these guys in through here. So just a little bit though, I feel like I need a little bit more red incorporated in through here and then little bits in through here, definitely back here on this. This is where I'm gonna start adding a little bit different texture. So this is red plus my um, background gray. Um, instead of doing the long streaks uh, on the, like I was doing on the feathers, I'm gonna start tapping it like this. This is gonna give me more of that shorter feather appearance that I was talking about. So lots of that in through here. I'm just going kind of for the grayer areas right now. I don't really see much gray on the head, but I do see a little bit in through here. So getting that in place in through here. I just had little hints of it, um, maybe little little tiny uh, feather tips or something in through here. That's good. The tail probably needs a little bit more um, of the gray little tones, kind of just showing their head in through here. And I keep adding a little bit of water onto my brush. I love doing my glazes. <laughs> so I'm just kind of bringing down a little bit of this uh, gray on top of that. That looks pretty maybe a little bit on the tips in through here. Just make sure, oops, that was too much paint on my brush. Make sure we've got little tips in through here that are represented. 
That looks good. And then I'm gonna bring these lighter colors up into, um, just make sure I've got a second coat on all of these little feathers in through here. I feel like they're looking very uh, representational, but I, I feel like I also want um, a little bit more lightness up here on this shoulder as well as um, I feel like I want a couple more streaks of darkness in through here. So I'm actually gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna pick up a little bit. I didn't, I don't think I said I was gonna use brown, but I'm picking up a little bit of brown on my brush. I feel like I want some uh, little, nah, I need, I need black. It's too, brown's too light. Um, just these little tiny subtle separations between these guys in through here and maybe more kind of curved uh, down that back. Yeah, that looks good. <laughs> now I'm gonna add um, a little bit of, I'm gonna go in for my, mm, for my highlight stuff in through here. So I can't just go red. If I just go red on top of red, I just get red. I can get a little bit brighter, but because my background is pretty light, it won't, it won't do much. So, and I don't want it darker. So I need to go for a color that is lighter than red, but still reads as red. So I do have my orange color that I created, um, but I think what I'm gonna do, um, actually, I'm gonna try that orange. I'm gonna, I didn't say I was using orange. I'm gonna try the orange and if I need to um, add more yellow or red and white, I certainly will. So I'm going with my orange. Oh yeah, that's all we need. <laughs> Sometimes you don't need to go far to find the color that you're looking for. So I'm gonna just start with this little orange and it's gonna give me my, my highlights that I want. If I needed it lighter, which I will in some areas, I will certainly go in a little bit lighter. Or if I wanted it more red, I could certainly you know, pick up that orange plus a little bit of red in order to do that as well. But I just really need to get a little bit of texture on here without it going pink on me. So something like this, if you just went red and white, you'd end up probably with a pink um, hue to everything. And I'm not seeing a lot of pink in this um, in this bird. I'm just seeing light red. So to me, light red would be steered towards more of like, a, you know, a, a peachy color as opposed to um, a pinky color. So that's where that's where I'm headed with this. And I'm seeing a little bit on top of here. That looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to bring this up this chest in through here up the neck. I see a whole bunch of little soft fur fe fur feathers in through here definitely on the top of the head so i'm still just into my peach right now and i will add um i will add other colors as i feel necessary so this would have been i called out red yellow and white this is red yellow and white i just had already mixed it from on the pre previous step so we're using that this looks good in through here, the top of the head. I'm gonna pick, I wipe my brush off. I'm picking up more red because I want this to really be red and I it felt like it wasn't fully, like I needed another layer on it. Same thing with behind this eye. Just picking up a little bit more red to make sure that that's super red. Um, and anywhere else, I think that looks good. That looks good. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of my orange right on the top of the shoulder in through here, and now I feel like I, I'm ready for some brighter highlights. So I'm going red and white. My red is really red as opposed to magenta. So when I add white to it, I really do get a light red color. Um, but if yours goes too pink on you and you don't like it, that's when you add a little bit of yellow. But right now I'm going red and white. Give myself this bright area right on the chest in through here. Not a lot, this is more for form than it is anything because if we um, study where the highlights are everywhere else, the, the, um, it doesn't tell me that the light source is over there, it just says that it's up above. Um, I think I need a little bit of this up at the top. I'm gonna put a little bit more white on my brush, give myself a couple of little streaks in here and right down this back, there's a lot of lightness right down the back of the bird. So I'm just picking up a little bit of white on my dirty brush. I might incorporate uh, something else, which I haven't decided yet if I'm going to or not, because I think it's coming out pretty good the way that it is. Um, and then just 
maybe a little bit of that gray just working towards this back because I feel like this needs to be a little bit lighter in through here. And then I'm thinking like I'm pretty pretty good with what I wanted to accomplish on it. I'm just kind of lightening up in through here. This was the gray and whatever remnants were on my brush. Um, maybe a little bit more in through here. Again, I've just got to get that shoulder to pop. Uh, a little. I'm going to put a little bit more red back in here in a second. That looks pretty good. Just kind of looking around and <laughs> seeing if there's anything else I want to do. That looks pretty good. A little accent on these little guys. Um, I'm going to lighten up just the edges of here with a touch of white just so we can see these little edges a little bit more against that um, gray background. And then I feel as if, let me just pop this on, that I might want some more what do I want up here? Maybe a little bit of brown. I just picked up brown because I feel that this is good, but I feel like I want a little bit more texture up here. So just a touch more brown. And that's that's the goal for me is when I'm when I'm trying to, to go for something with a realistic um, spin to it. I just picked up a tiny bit of black. I don't know if I said it. Oh, yeah, we use black already on this stuff. Um, I really am looking for those areas of contrast and uh, when I'm looking at my final result if I'm saying uh, there's there's something missing something's not popping it's probably because I need more contrast like I feel I need more lightness on this back still so I'm going some gray and white just on maybe a couple of these guys in through here with a little bit of water on my brush because I feel this area in here might need just a little bit more oomph to it. And you know, I would just kind of keep fiddling. Once I've got everything in place, I just sit back and say, okay, everything's in place. What needs to be brighter? What needs to be darker? Where do you need more, more highlights? Where do you need more shadows? And I just keep fiddling. And then I will fiddle until I get it into a place that is comfortable to me. I'm picking up my orange and red right now, just to kind of pop a little bit more in through here and and I'm in fiddling stage <laughs> so you can fiddle all you want <laughs> I'm going to be using um oh what am I going to use in next step I'm probably going to use my small I'm probably going to use this bright and my small round for the next step so once you've come to a final resting place on your painting <laughs> you can uh wash this brush and get ready for the next step all right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish all the mossy stuff. I'm gonna be using a combination of my number two bright and my number two round. I'm gonna use a bunch of colors. I'm gonna use my green, black, yellow, orange, white, and I might use some of that bluish green color that we used for the roof as well. So I'm gonna use uh, my number two bright for as much stuff as I can, and then I'll just switch to my small brush for the smaller details. So I'm going to start um, with the darker stuff and work my way to the light. I'm going to uh, pick up a little bit of black and green just to make sure that I have um, as much of this covering the bottom of my um, my pole because the pole is appears to be behind this greenery stuff. So I'm going to use this black and green first and foremost to um, make sure I've got that covered. Same thing with this little guy over here. So just making sure I've got little pieces of greenery coming out over there. And then I'm going to use this black and green for shadows everywhere else. So if I feel that I want more um, shadows in through here before I start putting on my highlights, I can just kind of carry in these darker notes. Um, that looks pretty good. I feel I'm going to have some greenery over here. I don't need any more shadows. Maybe a little shadow underneath that. Maybe a little shadow underneath here like that. Uh, I think that that all looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit more in through here. Uh, up in these guys, I've got some good shadow already going on up and through there. Maybe a little bit more uh, up back behind my um, bird's tail. This is where you could if your bird's tail wasn't popping out enough, just put some dark marks next to it and it will suddenly appear right in front. I'm putting some shadow underneath these guys in through here. So this is really just going to make them pop out 
even more like there's a little bit more sunshine um, casting a shadow down um, in between them and stuff so that looks pretty good I could even put a little bit more underneath these guys right on the um, I have a thunderstorm coming. I don't know if you guys can hear it or not. There's all kinds of rumbling outside. <laughs> um, so the, it, it won't distract me at all, I'm sure. <laughs> so I'm going to just put some dark marks down here. I can even pull down some little fun pieces every now and again. Make sure this is dark enough down and through here. So I think that's pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start building my way to the lighter colors. So I'm going to um, pick up some just green oxide because I feel I can use this green oxide in this stuff back in through here. And again, you could... I think actually this is where I'm going to use a little bit of my greenish blue plus my green oxide. So this will give me this really interesting color back here. And you can make as many little fun things as you want. I'm going to pull some down across here. I'm just wiggling my brush with the blue green and the um, and the green oxide in order to give myself some additional color variation. I'm going to bring some back in through here. So this is gonna show that there's some little moss pieces hanging out over in through here. I'm not getting rid of all of my black. I definitely wanna make sure that that works. Again, I'm just kind of wiggling my brush a little bit, just giving myself some fun, um, carefree marks in order to give myself um, that looks good. I don't think I need any of this color up in through there. Mm. Maybe, oh, that's that's fine. <laughs> I'm gonna wash and dry my brush because I wanna put some um, lighter color in this grass here. So I'm gonna go with green oxide, yellow, and white. And I'm going to, oh, and a little orange. I'm going a little orange too because I want this to look like pretty darn um, mossy-esque. <laughs> so I got a little bit of orange in there as well. And again, you could really have fun with this and make it into whatever kind of color pattern that you want um, a little bit in through here a little bit here a little bit there maybe a little bit kind of coming over in through here and I again this is one of my things I'm using multiple colors on my brush I'm gonna tap in some of this over here just to give myself some little extra stuff there I want to make sure that it looks like it's going behind this pole so I'm gonna just be really mindful right now at this little stage and give myself that color going from one side of the pole to the other so that will look like it's like I like this stuff is behind it. I feel there's a couple of really light pieces in through here. I'm going to put some white on my brush right now. It almost looks like there's some candy corn pieces here, but I don't I don't know if that's what they are. Or not. I'm just going to put some really bright white stuff right now. I'm going to let it dry while I'm doing some other stuff and I'm going to come back and put some bright yellow and orange on it cuz telling you, it looks like little candy corn pieces or something maybe that maybe it's the during the holiday season and and it went trick-or-treating or something <laughs> so that looks pretty good I have an unpainted spot right here so I just need to tackle that with a little bit of uh, green just get a little make sure you painted everything no, let it leave no thing unpainted and that looks good I'm now gonna go up top I'm gonna put some brighter stuff um, so I'm going yellow, orange, and white. Just a little bit of orange on my brush, yellow, orange, and white. And just giving myself a whole bunch of little, maybe more white than that. Whole bunch of just little squigglies here and there and everywhere, but not too much everywhere. I really want this to um, not overpower everything that I've done. I just want to add some little bits of highlights here and there. And so I'm heavy on the yellow and white with just a little bit of the orange maybe every now and again. And just making these little fun marks. You can uh, use more yellow, you can use more white, you could incorporate more green if you wanted to, wherever you're feeling the color palette should be, but I'm definitely going light, light. So lots of white. And you know, I was saying I was gonna use my small brush I'm, I might use it a little bit but I'm having some pretty good success with this brush so I'm not quite sure how much of that other brush I will be using but 
we're gonna we're gonna give it a whirly whirl here and see if I can get as much as I want with this brush and then I'm just gonna kind of pop down the side and again I'm just making carefree little marks a lot of yellow and white um, intermingling with the stuff I already had if you want to add a little warmth that's where the orange comes into play you could certainly um, add brown you could add red you could make this as colorful or as um, soft as you wanted it to you could add more green I just picked up a little bit of green to just show you how that would affect in through there but mostly again yellow and white coming down in through here this looks like it would be a little bit darker so I'm just going to pick up more orange as I come down in through here and then uh, that looks good but I think I want a couple of little highlights on these pieces here so yellow orange and white is still where I'm headed and I'm just popping in a couple of little itty bitty pieces in through here just to give that little bit of dimension so these pieces maybe there's a couple little just ones popping popping their little edges out and maybe just a couple little squiggly ones in through here and this is you know I'm just playing with these fun textural elements using the corner of my brush to accentuate um, little rough edges to these marks and I you can do lots of layers with this, but I'm I'm picking up some yellow and white on my dirty brush Just get a different tone going on in through here. So again, it's going to be wherever your your Preference is as far as looking at it um, Yellow and whites going back on my brush. Maybe just a little extra pop in through here little squigglies Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be going into my small brush. I think this brush might might do it for me I'm gonna um what am I gonna do now I'm coming back down here with some yellow on top of some of these white pieces so I put the white first because I had a darker background and the yellow or the white allowed for me to put some bright um, yellow on top of it which was just if I had just used yellow it wouldn't have um, the opacity would have made it so we couldn't see it um, so this this helps out so that looks pretty good I just want a couple of brighter pieces in through here so uh, yellow green and white is where I'm gonna go for some extra little pops of of brightness coming on this edge in through here and of course make yours whatever way you want if you want to have more mossy stuff or less mossy stuff that's totally up to you and then I probably fiddle with mine for a couple more minutes but um, once you've got yours into a place that is appealing to you we're gonna use our small brush for the next step so you can put uh, this small bright brush away take out a small round brush and I just get this little area up here and then you can just get ready for the next step all right so we are on to the final step this is the final step of every painting which is to sign it so i typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right i'm using my small number two round i think i'm going to sign this one in the bottom left hmm, with we're going to go black paint <laughs> i'm like i don't want to sign this one. sometimes you have those paintings where it's like oh i don't want to put my mark on it. i like you know like there's lots of cool detail at the bottom but you know this is my tradition. I sign it on the front. I like to use my initials. So I, I sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. You could certainly sign yours anywhere. You could put it on the back. Some people like to make, you know, fun symbols as their identifying mark. So whatever you want, it's your painting. You get to sign it and mark it up however you want. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful bird image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.